All right. So the uh, the secret sauce, if you came in for this one, you're wondering what, what it's all about. Uh, the, the, the sauce for this one is that the Twitch chat has voted and has decided that there is no ranged assassins allowed for this game number three. So we're going on in to Sky Temple here with no ranged assassins allowed. Now, this is ranged assassins or ranged DPS by the role dictated within Heroes of the Storm. So if you click on the ranged, you know, tab, all of those heroes are banned out. Mac was actually just saying, do we ban out Rexar? Mm, Rexar is, I mean, he is My ranged, but, but he is also a bruiser. So he, yeah. and he is going to be in the bruiser category. So if you do see things in there and you're wondering like, wait a minute, that's ranged. It's, it's not ranged D, E, S, or within the role of ranged assassin. Yeah. But bands coming out, and we find ourselves here on on uh, Sky Temple. I mean, jokes aside, do you think we could potentially see a like a Juice Pirates here? Just you, you melee, just like melees. I guess you really could. Yeah, it is a map that like of, the Illidan, the Tyrael, right? Most of Juice Pirates is is melee. I mean, you have. Lieutenant Morales, you've got Tyrael, you've got uh, Artanis typically, you've got Greymane, but that might, I think, I'm not sure what he's categorized. I think he's ranged assassin. Then you can just swap that out for- Greymane is ranged, yeah, they wouldn't yeah, be able you to can, take you him. Can, you can swap that out for an Illidan, as you just said, and then maybe pick up um, Zarya, because she's a support hero, and then you just have shielding. Like, that that Juice Pirates right there works a ton, but we do have a ban onto Urel as well as a Ragnaros. They're banning out Liam and Alora right there because Alora plays a mean Ragnaros. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Paradox. She did a whole uh, review on her Ragnaros play on his channel. It's a really, really interesting video. But Leoric to start things out on the side of Turkish Delight. Yeah, I like, I like that. I think knowing that there's going to be melee characters, Leoric is pretty good into melee, right? Uh, just being able to drain. Mm -hmm. I think it's a safe pick too on this map, but that right there is a creature that was just taken. Zul. If you guys didn't know, just got reworked a little bit, and now he's Spectral Scythe is spawning skeletons per hero's hit. Um, mm -hmm. he, he got his Decrypify, I think is what the talent's called, at level 16 back. It was, an actually, it was actually a talent that, in the beginning, they had taken away from him because it was overproducing, and then they gave it back, and now it's overproducing again. I think I looked up today, he has like a 62% win rate in Storm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, at least on, on HotDogs.com, he's got uh, 66 or something like that yeah. when I was reading it earlier as well. Um, Metal Magic, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. Oh. Thank you for supporting the league as an Abathur ETC coming through. Uh, I don't think we get a Lost Vikings, but if we get an Abathur Lost Vikings, that'd be the most wild ride that they'd be taking us on, honestly. That Abathur pick... Man, I, I feel like they're so wrapped around the fact that there's no ranged, that mm -hmm. they just slept on the fact that Abathur exists, and this is his map, right? Mm -hmm. And he loves forts that are half health um for some reason blizzard still has what uh i can't even think of it what's the level seven talent called that repairs there's mule. a name for it what is it called mule mule bingo yes mule mm -hmm. he's the only character in the game that has it and it's disgusting on this map right it, it makes mm -hmm. taking forts and keeps that much harder and without range damage dealers it's gonna be that much harder so I really like that pick here in this setup. And we have the Lucio ban too. I like that as well. I mean, works great with that mass melee, you know, turbo aggro, mm -hmm. Beyblade team fights. <laughs> the other thing to note too is like Mule can, and it just to kind of bounce off the point that you were saying, you know, the half health, half health for its dear Lord. Or, I mean, <laughs> why not? Uh, actually, in a sense though, He's like great. Murky, if you're gonna sacrifice a hero to maybe chase uh, uh, an Abathur down, Murky's a great hero for that. You got the mm -hmm. bubble, you can actually harass and potentially kill them. But um, if it, it, you can mitigate, you're saying half health forts, you can literally mitigate an entire temple phase with a mule. Obviously yeah. it's not gonna heal the entire fort, but you can get it, I think it's every 45 seconds you can call it down and mm -hmm. it stays alive for 20 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, you can just cycle through that and just get another one out and get it back to full health by the next objective phase. But a Murky and a Rager on the left-hand side. Last two picks coming out. With with, the, with an Abathur, you might as well go into an Illidan here. Like, I feel like double Illidan is, is, the, is the choice. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so I like I like the Alex Strauss. You know what's interesting for me, and I'm sitting here now that I see Alex Strauss, like, these teams aren't taking, like, they could take Tassadar, he's up. Like, you could take Taronda or Lili. Like, there are ranged characters that can be selected here that aren't ranged assassins, right? Uh, it's interesting that they seem to just be going into this mass melee. We're getting we're getting a, just a massive Heroes of the Storm fight. 
That, that's yeah. all we're getting. We're just gonna get everyone just scrapping. on top of each other, and it's gonna be just, it's gonna be a bloodbath. Um, speaking there of bloodbath, yeah, I, saw, I saw in chat, someone was actually saying, please bloodlust. I'm over oh, here saying, wow. like, yeah, please give us bloodlust. Give us bloodlust. I mean, there was the up, there's there's now the upgrade. I was actually talking to a player from from another league, and I was asking them because they played a bloodlust game. I was like, "Have you been testing around the new bloodlust?" Which is just it's range increase. I believe that was the only, or was it range increase and life steal increase? Um, I, I know for that. sure it's like almost like a global shout now, right? It's, and it's like it might be a duration increase afterwards. They uh, said um, the like person that. that was actually who had tested it and everything, and I was asking, I was like, what's the range as a player? They were like, Rhaegar was off screen, I think, for me, and I still got hit by it. So, yeah. it's, it, I, I honestly, I really want like a 20 talent tier fight between both these teams with Bloodless upgraded and Murky just, you know, march the Murlocs indefinitely or, or whatever we get. Like, this is, we're in for a treat here going into Sky Temple, and this Kira, I think, is an excellent clone target for Abbott, as well as a hat. Yep, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be great. I think what we'll really see a lot of this game is, is is how these teams move around the map. But as we see the blue team coming out, Smilers, we have Moon on the Murky, Liam on the Zul, Big Scoop coming in on the Joanna, Lake Fu on the Rhaegar, and Allura is going to be playing the Blaze. And on the right hand side, we got the members of the Turkish Delights. We got Kyberry's on the Alexstrasza. Liam Black will be on the ETC. Trixler is going to be on the Kira. We've got Mockery on the Abathur, and the Turk will be on the Lior. Let's go ahead and see what our mid lane matchup looks like here. As ooh, we actually have Shade from Shade. The yeah, I see that as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, it's interesting. You would think that with all the clumping and the meleeing, you'd want to go the blue shield. But here we go. Laura actually getting caught out here from Trick. The stun does connect. Turk's gonna have the drain on her as well, but she does have her passive going. 40 armor in the healing. Is it gonna be enough? Lake Fu. It's not. She is gonna be taken down there by Leon Black. And we are gonna see just a one for zero here in the early game. Kai healing them back up there with her W. But the mid wave is pushed. Zul doing a good job to try to mitigate that pick with potential XP loss. Just going right to the lane. And we're gonna be seeing, um, this is pretty standard for Sky Temple. I'm, I'm expecting this to kind of be like a 1-3-1 one, one here. Uh, maybe we're actually gonna be seeing Big Scoop rotating down the shield glare coming out. There's a root going on to Trixler. Alex is throwing a little bit of damage out with the flame buffet right there, but they'll back out and no one's gonna be getting picked off. So the typically what you see is like a 1-3-1, one, one, as I said. As Murky actually gets picked off in the top lane, Leoric getting a lot of good pressure on them in the Ampler hat, helping out on that one. But Leon Black, I can't even make a point. They're just inting into each no, other. I'm yeah. just like, let's talk about map strategy. No, let's just brawl. This is here is the storm. We don't need to talk about strategy. Who, who needs that in these games? This Trixler is in a bit of a bad spot. Uh -oh. They're going to be getting hit with that bone prison from Zul. Power slide in from Leon Black. We'll try and disrupt things, but they aren't able to save them. And that's going to be a one for one up on kills in total as Lake Fu gets a bite butt. But bite, excuse me, onto Leon Black. <laughs> a good little one, you know, a little overzealous there. I think they were getting confident. Moon had just died top lane as the murky. And then it was like, oh, you know, we have an advantage, right guys? But it's like, uh, I don't know if that's how murky works. Um, so they, they kind of bit off a little bit more than they could chew there. Good turnaround there coming out from Smilers. And I think as we see this game goes on, um, it, it really is going to come down to that ABBA and that, that murky pressure, right? Uh, how well yeah. they can pressure the side lanes to create opportunities. And, you know, this Zul pick, just being able to push so, so hard and so well, uh, that pressure, you know, how well can they defend with the Kira, right? Is it is it the Leoric that's supposed to be doing that? But we do see a fight here breaking out on the hard camp. Turk rotating in as well as Kai. She may have her dragon up right now. I'm not really sure. But we see just coming off of the camp, making sure that the Turk has to finish it himself. The Abahat does come out on Leoric, one of the better Abahat characters in the game. Turk might just be a goner here, but that is Leoric's purpose, right? Yeah, they actually, they were playing that really well. They were actually trying yeah. to delay this out of really, uh, it, they were trying to drag this out. Meanwhile, in mid lane, Blaze did get picked off by the engagement um, as Kira. I was, I was looking for Kira, I was like, wait a minute, was it not mid lane? No, the tricks are actually rotating back into bottom lane to help Abathur out because they need to push this back. Mockery actually auto attacking into the wave, getting one minion hit with that one. But either way, Temple phase will be activating. Lake Fu is going to be starting out on the top. We're going to be seeing a uh, big scoop on this Joanna in the mid lane. So they're going to get the initial shots out from this as Leoric does respawn in top lane, trying to deal with this Murky. They did go into Neil Peasants at level four, which will give them a little bit more opportunity in that skeletal swing to clear things like minions, mercenaries, and monsters a little bit faster. 
And the tougher fish there from Moon as well with the level one bribe on Murky. Pretty standard, you know, trying to get those puffer fishes to pop the wave, get the stacks. Uh, yeah, double trying just coming out from Smilers. I mean, why not, right? Uh, Turkish Delights really need to look for an opportunity to fight. Laura's doing a great job of keeping Leon off of the platform there. And we do see a fight break out here a little bit. A nice body block from Leon. A good pushback there. Allura almost able to get around there. Great stuff from Tracer coming out. They're going to pick her up there and probably finish up the shots there mid. But we do see Kai finishing the... Sh er, not Kai. Lake food. Sorry. And uh, on the rigor up on the top lane, finishing up that temple. So I think... Advantage-wise, we probably have blue team as far as shots go, but again, going back to the Avatar talk and Mule, um, most of that will be recovered there in the top lane if that fort is not finished soon. Actually, we see Mule in the bottom lane. Sad face for Mockery, but I guess um, you know we'll see. We'll see now if the opportunity the opportunity is there. Now the Smilers capitalize and, and end up taking that top fort now. Oh, Turk needs to get the Wraith Walk out of here. I was also incorrect in chat for anyone, or in draft, um, for anyone wondering. The Mule is 60 seconds duration, excuse me, 40 seconds duration and 60 seconds on the cooldown of that one. If you are wondering yourself at home, but Abathur had on this top lane for it, we'll delay things out, gonna get a little poke out here and there. Turk gonna get a slow with that Skeletal Swing. Allure gonna be throwing out some, the oil slick to slow them down as the enemy team is rotating in to defend against this. Ooh, ooh, oh, they're gonna catch themselves. Alora, actually, maybe not. Murky gonna Sheesh. throw a puffer fish on the ground. Mm. Safety bubble out, and they're Looks fine. Like everyone's out. Yep, the oil dropping there. To make sure the zoning uh, slows so they can't chase. Yeah, I, I, I honestly have to applaud Smilers for that. That that's a play that a lot of teams sometimes mis misplay, and to see them uh, finish off that fort in the top lane before the mule gets value. Uh, is, is really high level stuff. So best for team that entire time right just doing the Zool thing mid top mid or mid bot mid bot over and over soaking out the waves. Uh, Easy camp's gonna come out here and we're breaking into level 10s here. Tricks are actually caught out of position as well. A nice little group here coming out from Smilers getting that pickup. But Turk is having the top lane push in. We'll see if Murky opts to so you sometimes see Murkies will just you know throw themselves into the mid fort and they'll spawn on their egg TP back mm -hmm. top. Um, but he is just going to ro rotate up there. Zul actually covering the wave. So we might see Murky kind of creating some map pressure here. Uh, more or less just a ward, right? He, he he just needs to figure out where the other team's at. That opens up space for the Joanna and the Zul. And you can see that right now on the map, actually. The Joanna's pushing in bottom. We're getting priority on bottom lane. Vesper is pushing into the top, getting that priority on the top lane. Um, and it's forcing Turkish Light into this hard camp push. They know where they're at. So here we are. We're pushing into the bottom lane. Four man. Let's let's see if we can get let's see if Love we can get us. a tower. Oh, we do have a bloodlust. Oh my. Yes. Also, to note for anyone wondering at home, uh, so I uh, level four jailers for Zul has been finished out. Level seven on Joanna Subdue is not finished out. Nine stacks on the new habits for the Blaze as Jeff Propulsion comes in. There's gonna be a clone onto onto Trickster, so there's gonna be double cure coming in. Lake Foo's uh, trying to make their way out as they oh. didn't pop the bloodlust. The Nexus Force is a little too OP. That's gonna be the March the Murlocs coming out from Moon. Most of them actually hitting into that sidewall, unfortunately. Gonna get some slow into a couple of oh. high bears. The back line is being dove upon. They get the life finder out just in time. No mana onto them, but they still survive through this as Moon and Kai Bears are 1v1ing in a sense. Vesper now rotating in to help out the friendly team, so they drop out the Skeletal Mages, and Trickster playing to the far side of the spike, gets the grapple to the right, they're trying to make their way out as they do find the Blaze kill overall, somehow, some way, the members of Turkish Delights are not going down, unfortunately the Alex Straza does go down as I cast a curse myself, but... <laughs> I would say overall, Turkish Delights coming out in favor of that fight as the power slide comes through from Leon, popping that murky. Yeah, that was a, a really good engage there from Leon. He was able to get a slide there on Lake Food before the fight really could get, get a hold, and, and we forced an early bloodlust um, and, and kind of the defensive posture, right? You really want to be hitting that bloodlust and going aggressive. Zul's actually picked up by Turk there. Uh, we, uh, I can only imagine how Turk feels taking down the Zul. The Abba hat obviously helping out there. Um, but yeah, just a really good engage from Leon. You, you want to try to use that Bloodlust aggressively and to have to force it defensively. Uh, it kind of sets your team on the back foot. On that note, trying to Temple going down because that, fi that fight, I mean, I can't believe that that fight turned the way it did. I was expecting Smilers to be able to capitalize on so many mm -hmm. low health pool player heroes, but like Trickster got an insanely good grapple from one bush into another, so they weren't really targeted, and then they were able to cycle back over to Kai, who was being harassed by the Murky, but still managed to get that life binder off, and that life binder was so critical. I'm excited to see, like, the next time we get into a big fight or the next temple phase, I think we should jump into some comms, because I think these, these teams have probably a lot more intense comms, especially in a 
ba Beyblade type game as we have here, where everyone's yeah. just kind of bashing into each other's faces. Also going to be grabbing and stealing away the Siege Giant camp on the left hand side for the lights. Yeah, I actually, um, I definitely think that in this next fight we should we should go into Turkish as calm. Oh, let's jump in now. Yeah, let's see if we can jump in now. Is that all right? They're super stunned. I'm spinning in a circle. We. I'm kind of stuck here and I don't like it. That's fine. I can't well, make it to that fight. That's not fine. All right, I'm leaving. You guys should just leave. Yeah. Couple Probably losses. dead team. Couple Can losses. I have Leon in a second? That's okay. They might do boss. Mm -hmm. Rip. Huh. Mm, no, they should be fine. With Leon still up. I can. I can uh, double boss. Yeah. They Leon may have just started there. it. But I feel like their damage is so low, they wouldn't do it. I'll check. Okay. They're, they're all fucking I think they're definitely on it. You think so? Yeah, hundred nope. percent. Oh wait, there's a zool. I think they're zoning. Yeah, oh, they were. Okay. Uh oh. I'm here. You're fine. Uh, I'm on the way middle. Do we just want to mess them up here? Nice power slide. Oh, no, no clone. I need healing. Thank you. you. I find her nice. Ooh, that barely went off. Blaze no mana. Do a big boss him. bottom. Then. Oh my god. Oh, oh, man, deal. really? <laughs> Puffer fish at 1100 damage, dude. The immune's actually all of their damage. It's really weird. Vesper team's really low? Oh. If I can just have some mana. Fuck. There's a big spawn of gloves. No. We need yeah, to be the I like I, I I love having the the vision there, and just hearing them. You know their damage is pretty low, and they're just we see the other team just wailing on the boss. <laughs> Could really quickly, if if it's possible, can can we actually pull up the damage numbers? It's control two for the observer right now as the sage comes in on the lake foo. A whole lot of damage to them. They actually have big scoop getting out of here just fine. I just because they said all the damage is on Tur on, on to Moon. Thirty two thousand damage on Murky right now. <laughs> oh, Thirty two thousand no. on Murky. The closest on the opposing side is Mockery on the Abathur. He's actually thank gone time you, to Krill. Thanks for showing all those stats. I really appreciate it because like they said it and I pulled it up myself and I was like, wait, really? Yeah, apparently. It's I think it's that time. It's definitely time to Krill kind of showing off, right? Um, this mass melee. You know, lacking kind of that range burst that you normally see. Um, he, he's just able to just auto attack things down, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Bloodlust, I didn't even think about that, right? Bloodlust with time to Krill. Uh, <laughs> and Toxic buildup now at level 16 has been taken. Mm -hmm. So he's just whack, 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 whack. Yeah, that, all, all that slime. Um, just it, it, casually running it down bottom lane. Sometimes. Sometimes that you just let the other team, you know, the skeletons from Zul help, right? Uh, but the other thing too, I mean, they they know that someone's in top lane, if, if, but they're going to continue to fight Ooh, this out over here as the march. The Murlocs come out from Murky Turk in a bit of a bad spot. Lightfinder yeah. is not going to be able to connect in time, unfortunately. Yeah, they need to be a little more careful or mindful there. Uh, not having trick, I would say, is most of their damage. Liar, actually a good engage here from Trick. Alora taking a lot of damage. She still has the bunker up. Bloodlust is also up as well. Leon is actually jumping in with a stage dive here. Blaze's charge is going to miss, but the Bloodlust does come out. The bunker is also coming down. Big Scoop kind of retreating here. Alora trying to find her way out. Is she going to be able to get away from Mockery? We see Trixler actually landing his heroic on Lake Fu. A nice stun here as well. As Alora goes down, we might see Lake Fu go down as well. She's getting out. Little to no health. Rage, maybe. Yeah, oh, Blood no, they, the they got the chain kill up in time, so they'll be fine right there. Ooh, that, I mean, they 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 pick up a blaze and they manage to disengage. Oh, uh, Mian has actually the uh, safety bubbles. So they're able to get out of there just fine. Um, they also do have the rejuvenating bubble as well. So they do have that that increased health, so they can just be even more of a harassment tool. Speaking of harass, look at Turk over here up in the top left, trying to help, uh, trying to steal away this camp. But the friendly team's coming in, and Big Scoop Investor need to make a decision here, and they decide to leave. Yeah, this is a this is around the phase of the game where. The Leoric really, the Leoric Abba especially, really start to show off their their, their power and strength. Um, that 16 talent picked up on the Abathur, the movement, uh, the movement speed on the shield, it just makes Leoric almost impossible to get away from. And he auto attacks pretty hard too. So 
Um, just all of that sustain coming in from that shield, that movement speed. You know, we have the simiote spike burst healing. Uh, it, it, it's just a really, almost like a raid boss as uh with the black march but we do see an engage coming out from trick so he's trying to get his ult off he might get a big ult here allura is going to get stunned stage dive coming out a three-man slide coming out from leon a nice cleanse from lakeview but moon is going to go down mockery looking to clone the bloodlust comes down the bunker as well has been dropped the bunker is going down here tricks are getting healed up from kai a nice w a second w comes out is it going to connect it does indeed vesper team going so low but he's shrinking everybody down there with azul lakeview getting away with about 10 percent health as well trick does connect onto the big scoop the bleeds are there. Moon trying his best here to put some pressure on Kai, but she does have that after hat move speed again. Just so much insane heals from Kai. Tons of puddles, tons of value. That mass melee just, man, it's paying off, right? Taking that, that character. They, they played that so well. And here's the thing. They've got a double temple phase, three members down on the opposing side. They could boss because it literally just came off cooldown. I was checking at the Ooh. end of the fight. It was at 12 seconds. They rotate over, grab the fort. Really good communication coming out from Turkish Delay in the later half of this game. Early game seemed a little sketchy, but the momentum started to build for them in this later half. And now you can actually see Murky's considering that it's actually going to set up a, a, an egg over on the right-hand side. And Moon's going to be try trying to grab this with a boss being grabbed by the enemy team. And these shots will be raining out towards the mid lane keep against Turkish Delights. The mid lane is actually being harassed by Alora. If two if, if opposing sides uh, heroes are on on this point, it actually doesn't fire at all. But this is going to be shots going into mid lane, deep front gate. As Kira comes down here to interrupt Moonfares. This is a brave egg placement from Moon. Yes, it might pay off. I don't think they check it unless they back in that brush. Yeah. So I, honestly, maybe it's just Galaxy Brain uh, at the end of the day, and, and and I'm the one that's that's silly. Uh, it. it it's an aggressive egg placement. Yeah, it's risky. I'm I'm not a hundred percent for it, <laughs> but that's 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 also I don't play this game at the same level as Moon does, so he's 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 seeing this completely different than we are right now. I wonder they're taking a gamble. I wonder if we will see the tuna. Oh, Big that's... Kahuna tuna. Uh, with the build that they have, I actually kinda think they might. Here we go. And we got 20s up on both sides. Uh, do you want to jump into the comms of the Smilers? Yeah, let's let's jump into their comms. Oh, let's get out. I'm perma candling it. March. They are dying. I'm low. The tanks are running. I'm too Careful, low. guys. I gotta leave. I mean, they're chasing me for no reason. I'm good. You need it. Yeah. <laughs> I love. We we just get our answer there, right? We jump into the comms. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna go tuna? I'm channeling March forever. <laughs> <laughs> We also we did get a uh, we did get the um, Gladiator's War Shout, which is the upgrade for Bloodlust, and uh, it is only just the duration and range increase. So that, that, because that's what I, I couldn't remember. I knew it was two things. Vesper getting dove on by Trickster right there. That should be a kill onto them. Unrelenting Strike does not connect, but that was still cast in the hopes of um, one getting cooldown because they did go for the upgrade, which mm -hmm. the Silent Killer gives cooldown if you hit a hero, but also just to make sure that they potentially get the kill onto that Zul. And the Zul being down is, is is pretty scary here, right? You see the Leoric with the Avahat, uh, still kind of raid boss status. Trick actually often to go in here, misses the stun on the Kira. Turk tanking up a bunch of damage, but he does have a really good march to sustain up a lot of life, and he has gone into the Drain Towns. He's going to be able to spook his way out of there. Kai still should have Dragon Form here as well as, well as Life Binder. Yeah, Moon's going to go down a big stage dive, going to miss on everybody big soup taking a ton of damage a nice heal from lake food but it is maybe gonna be enough indestructible indy right bleed lake food with the a chain heal for them oh my goodness that was about as perfect as it could have been right like by the second oh moon maybe ah just gonna so, high five them ships passing the <laughs> night you know he might actually look for an engage here if he gets a big march potentially if he sees it uh, I need, you kind of need to march from the side, but he might be able to pick up at least one, maybe not, if not two. Here we go, he's looking for that side angle. 
Let's see if Kai attacks him at all. She is in the Dragon Queen form, playing from the far side of this. That is going to be Azul, the first one to go down. Mune is actually going to be trying to split them. Leon Black working their way back towards this fight. Huge little buffet coming out from this Dalek Straza to push the enemy team back towards their friendly team. And Alora drops that bunker. They're trying to make their way out of here, losing two members on the side of the Smilers. And there is a win condition here for our Turkish Delights. They could actually walk this through mid lane. They've got some decent damage and uh, they have a wave here as well. They might be looking to try and end game with 40 seconds on two players. It's gonna come down to how well can they core. Um, no dragon form, right? The Abathur does, we do have the Abathur actually opting out. I was gonna say we, we should have an Abathur double hat, but he has opted to go into the ultimate evolution at 20. Lakefu getting slid out here. Silence is coming out, the stun from Trick, so the movement speed a little late. Turk's taking a lot of damage, but hate to see it. Life binder, One binder, two binder, three binder. A stage dive is gonna come down here, connecting on Moon. Stop that channel. Allura, good on Blair to break the chain from Trixler. A nice stun coming out on Turk. There's just so much sustain coming out of Kai. She's doing a great job of keeping everyone alive. Zul does spawn, but just a little too late, and it is gonna be a victory from the Turkish Delight. In in a game where there is no ranged assassin, <laughs> we had we had some really fun fights. Eighty four thousand heroic damage from a merc. But I want to point this out: Trixler on this Kira. Ninety seven. Dear Lord, Trixler on this Kira was scary.